Gillis went one for six in the double header between the two teams in British Columbia that was split and she's called out on a little slap by Bess when center fielder was caught in and it'll carry over her head. That's why you can't play all that short. And Bess, when, if she gets a chance to run, will run all day. It's a triple. And then she's awarded a home on the error on the throw by the center fielder, Gillis. It's a triple. They just go to the left of uh, top. Yeah. 
Well, the softball season has come to an end as the Concordia Cavaliers drop two to the clan from Simon Fraser University. Coach Shelley Whitaker with us first because our post-game guest wants to see how this all works before she takes a stab at it, apparently. <laughs> but uh, why have you been having Macy Besswin slap hit all year long when she has fence power, right? You know, it's kind of like <laughs> what we figured out with Max. She's got a little speed when we were dropping the buns down. Uh, surprises, you know, even throughout the year from the start to the finish. Uh, you know, Macy's done a good job, though. Uh, last year, she was able to put the ball in play and drive like she did today, but yeah, uh, and utilize her speed. You know, yeah. She's got a little bit of that. Well, that's a great little spark to kind of carry to the offseason and, and let is. you get ready. So, uh, really one of the highlights of the day. And then you got great pitching from Tori. And how, how do you decide at that point? I mean, you, you let her take a little curtain call. That was great and get the one out. Yep. But I know it has to be so tempting to say, hey, last game of the year, keep going, keep going. And, and you did stretch her into a fourth inning today. We did. Uh, and that's something between her and I. We knew we were going to go for two. And then I was thinking to myself, uh, I talked to one of my assistants. I said, hey, let's try to get three out of it. It's a you know, last double header of the season. And Tori came over. She's like, coach, three. So we were on the same page there. And oh, then good. it got through three. And we both looked at each other. And, you know, who's going to make this call? And I said, you know, at the end of the day, I'll make the call. One out, let's do it so I thought she went out in great fashion was able to get the ground out and toss it over to one and a uh, great way to finish her career yeah there was such an uproar for a second and especially since she was in the fourth and okay all right now I, yes. it, it was like a basketball coach calling the senior off the floor <laughs> for the final time and a great way for her to Absolutely. kind of step out what will you remember most about this group of Cavalier seniors? You had five, and, and really players that you inherited coming into the program, so that's had to be a little bit of an adjustment as well. But what will they store in your memory of those two years so far? You know, I think work ethic, hands down. Uh, you know, the, the integrity that, that this group has and is uh, instilled in our program and throughout this year, the work ethic day in and day out. You know, some of these seniors didn't receive a lot of playing time, but they still day in and day out in practice went in, got their reps, kind of set the bar for all of our young players in the program. You know, like you and I have talked about before, half the roster new, half returners, which is always, you know, a, a difficult mesh there. But, you know, with these five, it was an easy, um, easy fit for them to set the bar and kind of um, integrate the new players, whether they're transfers or freshmen, into the program. And while you had the five seniors and they were kind of the central part of the weekend between commencement and then senior day to day, some of your own young players got some time today and started to show that portent for the future. Yeah, you know, um, the one thing in moving from last season to this season I knew that we lacked was field time. You know, we, we graduated uh, the seven last year and they, they were dominant players for us. So we just being green in actual innings on the field was something that I was aware of and it kind of reflected defensively you know in the in the era column but uh, for our young players I think the future's looking bright we're doing a lot of hard work in the offseason trying to get the appropriate recruits in here um, and uh, just setting the mentality I think one thing one of the big things that we look for is the ability to compete you know we talk about going out and playing the game but there's a difference between pay, uh, playing and competing so we're looking for those athletes that will come out here and compete for us and that's the next step I want to talk about a little bit was the recruiting uh, fair to say that pitching's got to be a cornerstone of your efforts in the offseason? Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, as of right now, we have two coming in. We're working on uh, another transfer, too, and, you know, we're going to kind of uh, button up some other areas for us in the offseason. Uh, I think we'll have uh, you know, a transfer and a freshman come in who are able to step in and get quality playing time for us right off the bat. And, you know, quite frankly, at this point, we're already on to 2019s and kind of eyeing up some 2020. So, you know, we're going to, over the course of the past 15, 16 months, you know, kind of setting the stage. And it's a process and at times um, you know patience is something I'm not always the greatest at but you know the, this whole uh, moving this program to exactly where we want it to be and need it to be to be competitive within the conference and uh, the region is something I knew that you know we got to stay focused on the process and not always the outcome.
which in, in sport, we're always focused on the W's and L's, but this is a process, and uh, right now, you know, we're, we're on path, as we just have to, uh, I think next year will be a, a big, what you see today is definitely um, a great product, but we, we look forward to better things for next year. I think that's an important thing for people to realize. Everybody thinks about early signing periods in football or basketball and things like that. You've already done a good chunk of the work that you want to do then. Yeah, we have um, all summer, you know, throughout uh, the fall, always out, you know, working camp and eyeing up some players and establishing relationships. You know, that's where recruiting really comes down to within the travel ball world, getting out there and making our name known and recruiting, uh, just kind of recruiting, uh, making our recruiting base a lot larger. Nothing wrong with the local folks, but we like to recruit out a little bit too. And that's something people don't realize. There's that perception that, oh, well, gee, today's the last game of the season. Now the coach gets to, you know, proper feet up on the couch in the office. And, and it really is key in finding those players, as you see, and expanding the circle for the Cavaliers in working the elite camps and the elite tournaments. It, it definitely is. Get our name out there. You know, we've been fortunate enough to be able to partner with, uh, like, a Portland State or a couple of Southern California schools where we're going to work some uh, satellite camps, which is going to be huge for us. Um, you know, Denver out there, there's three uh, tournaments out there. They're just the biggest in the nation. So it's really crucial for us to get out there and be able to work those camps so our name is seen and able to see um, the talent that's out there and try to attract those. Well, uh, hopefully you didn't get too many to look at the rain showers today because that won't help now. We got the short delay there. We'll let you head out. Thank you. You know, there are a lot of coaches who, when adversity hits, kind of cut and run. And one of the things I appreciate the most is that win or lose, however the day goes, you're up here to talk about it. And, uh, you know, whatever we can do to help the program as well. But a, a key part of it is just getting to spend a little bit of time with you and talking about the program. So. Absolutely. You're the greatest. You, you and uh, Sports Information over here, Jody. The, the you guys hold it down pretty well up here. And I appreciate that you did uh, give us the four seasons today. We had the sun, the rain, the wind, the cold. So uh, You got my hopes up. I thought you were saying Frankie Valley. I was getting, you know, I'll start I'm not that old. Well, <laughs> yeah, but you can appreciate you getting music. I am. I can. So, yeah, I can. There yeah, we yeah. go. All right. Tell us about our uh, chicken guest who has back paddled about 10 feet since we started started, so I'm not really sure if she's ready to do this or not. I think she's a little petrified, but we should tell her we really do not have 5 million viewers, so well, it's, it's really going to be pretty good. Uh, no, so I'm very confident you're going to get in here to do a, a knockout job, but uh, we got our uh, senior catcher coming in, uh, Jessica Johnson. She's going to talk a little bit about senior day, kind of what her senior year has, has meant to the program, and uh, if, uh, if I know you well enough, you can carry her if anything falls through. And she had the best ceremonial first pitch thrower out yes, there before did. game one so and i'm sure I, we can get her to talk I think about you had that like a little a bit quarter too. of portland kind of escorting you down for senior day too <laughs> yep had, had the posse with her so why don't we bring her in shelly thanks <laughs> as always thank for you. your time Appreciate and we'll it. look forward to next season and having the fruits of recruiting pay off you know so. it. thank you you're welcome we'll bring jess on at least you get ear warmers this way so there's always a plus to it so go ahead and sit and we'll get you all set so there you go is that a comfortable enough fit for you? Sure. Right. So, tell us about Kingston. Uh, he's my nephew. He's four years old. Um, Shelly, this is the quietest she's ever been. I see her on the field. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're pretty close. I have another nephew and then a niece. They weren't able to come today, but he's a man. He was really excited. He came up in my room today and he was like, sorry. You're fine. You're fine. <laughs> he was like, uh you were on the black team today? And I was like, yeah, dude, I'm wearing my gray uniform. Like, and he was like, am I on that team too? And I was like, yeah, man. Like, I was like, you're only throwing one pitch, so you're not playing the whole game. Well, so. he probably thought he was going to start after all yeah, that. Yeah, so. I was like, dude, you're only throwing one pitch. Does like, he follow all. the team a lot? Um, he comes to as many games as he can, but, yeah, he yeah. likes coming and watching. Falls asleep sometimes in the stands, yeah. so. He's entitled. Yeah. They probably make him listen to broadcast. That's why he dozes off. So. Right. I'm going to show him this. There you go. <laughs> Talk about senior day a little bit. What has this meant for you? It's it's kind of a change of chapters, a page of a new beginning. I'm sure you look back and a little wistful that it's all over as well. But uh, what will you take with you as your biggest memories of being at Concordia? Um, it's been a ride. Um, this is I'm a fifth year senior, so it's been a long ride. But um. It's been fun this year. Things haven't really gone as we wanted them to as well. But, you know, I think we put up a good fight and stuff. And in our first game today, I think we did a really good job, like, fighting for it. It didn't turn out best, but we were there. Had to be a blast being behind the plate for that yeah. game, too. And to catch Tori. Yeah. It was really fun. Um, me and Tori have been in this for, like, five years, so 
Sorry. No apologies needed. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was really fun and, like, very meaningful for me because we've been at it for so long together. Yeah. And we both pretty much killed it, so. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It was because of your pitch calling and your location and framing or so. It's all on you. Thanks. Tori had nothing to do with it whatsoever. How about the future now? You, you wrapped that up, commencement yesterday. What plans would you, you know, if you could get the, the dream fulfilled, the wishes, where would you like to head career-wise? Um, right now I'm headed to take a couple more prerequisites for nursing school and, yeah, hopefully by the end of the summer I'll have those done so I can apply for a nursing program for next year. The accelerated BSN program at Concordia University, which graduated its first cohort yesterday, by the way. Yeah, that's actually on my list of ones. Build to a foundation for, so. for that, okay? So, yeah. and eventually, what kind of nursing would you like to go into? Um, I want to do labor and delivery. Um, eventually, work my way into like a birthing center, more like natural medicine type setting. So you're that person that loves to work with kids and with moms. Yeah, I do. Yep. Great path to take. This is the first step to it. Hopefully you'll be back, do the accelerated BSN, and then we can put you in the stands. <laughs> you can either cheer, or if you really want to get brave, we'll put the headsets on you let you be the color analyst. Um, so. I think this is a one and done thing yeah, I think okay. for me, you know. Well, <laughs> you know, you have to have your moment in the sun, so I hope it was at least semi-painless for you. So yep. congratulations, good luck with everything, and uh, as we said, Hopefully you'll get back here, maybe get the BSN here and be a Cavalier even more. So, <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for the time, Jessica. Jessica Johnson joining us here at Hilkin Stadium as we wrap up our doubleheader and we wrap up our...